interstate now. After getting some gas and a coffee for the last leg of the trip up to the camp. Do a little coyote calling and cook some cooler meat. Just check on the camp, head it up. I gotta pick up my bear head at the taxidermist a little south of where my camp is from last year. We just got here to the taxidermist. Don't know if he wants to be on film or not. Well, as it would turn out, Ray didn't mind being on camera. I messed up and had it on photo and not video. Just left the taxidermist, picked up my bear head. All right, as you can see, we just just arrived. The road's not plowed anymore. Leave the truck there until I can come out with a snowmobile and pack the rest of the stuff into the camp. Got the snowshoes in the jet sled here, just in case I need them. Right now the trail's still packed pretty good from the last time I was here.
chaga going. We'll brew some chaga. Usually what you do is take three or four chunks. So you add your cubes of chaga into your water. So my chaga, I like to have some honey with it. Put a teaspoon of honey in there. Well, it's still freezing rain out now. Coming down, still pretty good. Well, we tried to Make a go of coyote hunting, but it's been raining on and off. So I came back and decided I'd prune my fruit trees instead. Weather will be a little better. They're trying to call coyotes. It's stopped raining now. But it's too late to get anywhere to call. Not a very good morning to go call coyotes. Well, the weather's still coming down pretty good, so we'll have to see what it's going to do this afternoon and see if we can get out and do some coyote calling. But in the meantime, we're gonna make a venison roast and we're gonna cook it in this. So I call it cooler meat. We just use hot water and an insulated cooler. And we'll make a nice venison roast. Fresh ground coffee.
So you want to clean up your venison. This is venison back strap. This is actually my main buck that I shot. Alright, I start out with a little bit of sea salt. This is coarse. McCormick's grill mate. You use whatever seasonings you want. This is some more McCormick's. This one's got a little bit of brown sugar in it. Some mesquite chipotle from Cabela's. A little bit of rosemary. Some thyme. Some cilantro flakes. A little bit of oregano. And I throw some chives in. Normally I use a fresh sprig of rosemary, but I didn't have any. Flip them over and repeat the process. I already did the Here I just have a cheap food saver. I almost forget the most important part. I usually put a couple pads of butter in. And a little bit of minced garlic. You can season it to however your tastes are. Alright, once you get them sealed up in your vacuum seal bags, now you just gotta heat up the water in the cooler. Alright, so we got our water heating on the stove and our cooler warming by the fire. When you're making your meat, you don't want to take the meat after you seal it and season it and put it back in the fridge. You want to kind of keep the meat room, get it up to room temperature so when you put it in the hot water of the cooler, it doesn't suck the temperature of the water down. And what you'll need is a uh, a good thermometer, meat thermometer. I guess you could use a candy thermometer, but I got this thermometer at Cabela's. 
I'm not sponsored by them. But um, you want to make sure you don't put this probe, submerge it underwater, because a lot of times you'll mess the probe up. What you do is you go into your beef, and then you pick your taste. Well done is 170 degrees, if that's the way you like to eat your meat. Medium's 160. So if you want your meat medium rare, which we're going to have, it's 145 degrees. So if your water temperature is at 145, 146, it can't go any beyond that. It stays right at 146 degrees, so you can't overcook the meat. And the nice thing about it is if you're going to go out for the day, say you're going out snowmobiling or doing something, or you're not going to eat till later, you get your water temperature up, chuck your meat in there, and forget about it for hours. The temperature is never going to go beyond that. The water will come down some, but the meat will be thoroughly cooked at the temperature you want. The actual water temperature is 149, which isn't too bad. It'll come down some once I add it to the cooler and put the meat in. But we'll get that off the stove. All right, so we reached 145, still in the cooler. We'll check the actual temperature and see what it's still at. Don't know if you can read that or not. So it's maintained in 145 right now. We'll put our meat in. The nice thing about it is they're all vacuum sealed in, so all the juices, it'll cook in all its own juices and the spices. We'll just monitor it for a couple minutes, make sure it stays right around 145. I'll probably add a little bit of hot water from the kettle just to bump it up to like 146, 147 because it will drop a couple degrees. Well, as you can see, it's already dropped to 144. So we'll add a little bit of that hot water. All right, temperature seems to be holding fine. It's been a few minutes. So now I can take off for the rest of the afternoon. It seems like it kind of stopped freezing rain right now, so I might run to the Amish store and then go out and do some coyote calling. And I can come back four, five, six, seven, eight hours from now and your meal's totally cooked. We do this a lot when deer season rolls around in the morning. You get up, you just... Heat up your water, throw it in the cooler. If you already pre-seasoned the night before your meat and sealed it, you just get it out, get it in the cooler, and then you go hunting all day long, and when you come home, it's perfectly cooked, ready to go.
So we'll check one of our roasts out. We're going to go eat at Larry and Carol's. My neighbors. I'll wrap this back up and put it in the cooler in a Ziploc. But that's some perfectly cooked venison roast. Tender as all can be. Cooked perfect. Get this wrap back up and we'll head over. Head over to have dinner. We'll toss this back in to keep it warm. Put it right over. Take my probe out now. Hopefully I don't get wet riding the snowmobile out to the truck. So I just called for a Northern Maine Uber. Carol can't wait to see you. She's all excited. Just came down to have dinner with my neighbors, Larry and Carol. Live here off the grid all winter long. No way to get down here except for sled during the winter. Yeah, unless you want to use it to seal the meat back up after. Will there be any left? There's two two things here. Oh. Larry talks about this meat all the time. Yeah, I do. We gotta do that. <clears throat> but the trick is that you need to have the uh, the seasoning on it already, right? Yep. Like before you vac it. Yep. When you vacuum seal it, all your seasonings and everything's in there, so it cooks in its own juices. Now, is that a seasoning mix that you mix up, or is it something nope, you buy? No, McCormick's Montreal steak seasoning, oh. and then it's a McCormick's.
Corby showed up. Canadian Jays. Of course, the day I'm leaving turns sunny, blue sky. I might stop and try to call a couple coyotes before I hit the interstate. But just getting packed up. I'm here. Gonna spread some wood ashes from my food plot. Just running the generator a little bit, exercising it before I take off. Put some around some of these apple trees. So they spread a scoop on each one of the apple trees and then I'll spread the rest. Got a lot of clover on this hillside. Well, if you burn wood, you want free soil amendment. Just save your wood ashes and spread them. All right, <clears throat> we're all packed up. We're heading, heading out. Kind of late in the day to try to call any coyotes, but we'll go try to give it a shot anyway. It's warmed up quite a bit. Snow's getting soft. It was like walking on plate glass earlier, being crunchy. Typical New England weather. About 10 minutes ago, it was sunny blue sky. Now it's clouded up. I'm starting to get snow flurries. They always say if you don't like the weather in New England, wait five minutes and it'll change. Well, the first setup we did we just called in a bunch of crows. But I'll get packed up and we'll go try another spot real quick.
Well, no luck. Come on in the second spot. The wind kind of changed direction. Got a little windy, so I'm sure the sound ain't carrying too far. We'll go try one more spot. Then they gotta get on the road.